Hey there, welcome everybody. My name is Kyle with Being Bethunes, and uh, I appreciate you being here today. Anyways, we are in Madison. I don't know if you can tell, probably not, because how could you? Well, I need to kind of point that down a little bit. Yeah, we're in Madison, starting our this adventure off here in Madison. We're gonna have one of those, I don't really know where we're gonna go kind of days, or where this day, we're just gonna kind of let the day take us where it needs to go. Um, we're gonna have to take some back roads, just kind of see some small town America. I, I really love small town America. It's, it's very, it's interesting to me. Uh, so I think that's what we're gonna do today. I, I have, I've been wanting to do this for a little bit. Um, and I figure what, what better time when I'm sitting slap dab in the middle of small town America. Yeah, so that's on the docket for today, guys. I uh, appreciate you joining me and uh, I think we'll have a good day. So I was just filming my little intro there. I ran across this uh, Have a Coke sign here, very old sign, that's, that's cool. The signature glass Coke bottle there, six fluid ounces. That's a, that's a cool sign. It uh, looks like that's been there for uh, quite a while. But uh, one of the things, you know, for me, influencing me wanting to do this type of video is just a couple days ago, me and Ben were, my oldest, were talking and we were going somewhere. I think we we're actually riding through town here. And he's like, Dad, why is there nothing here? Why is there no people here? Where? You know, why, why, you know, and, and I, it's a good question, you know, for a young person like him. I mean, I get it. There's socioeconomic things, you know, vicinity to industry, like, you know, vicinity to jobs. I mean, obviously there's a lot of factors go into what makes, you know, these small town America versus, you know, major metropolitan areas, you know, but it's an interesting thing, you know, to think about, you know, one time, this is probably, I love the clock bell. Yeah, I really, for some reason, really love this courthouse. Um, it's very beautiful to me, and I love the clock tower up there. That's really beautiful. It's a very, very beautiful courthouse. And uh, they have this like huge, I'm like, gonna assume that's some type of water tower thing. Check this out, I, I haven't seen one of these, and I bet this thing is old, this old style water fountain here. It's got four individual uh, dispensers there going into one trough. I wonder, I don't think, I don't think it's still uh, still in operation, but that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a relic there. That's, a, that's an old piece. For sure. But yeah, anyway, I don't know. He was just kind of bringing that up, you know, about why, you know, why is there no one here? You know, he's like, if I was the governor, I, I would, I would make put stuff here, you know. And I think it's a good question to ask. You know, we're all just kind of, you know, living our lives, living, living in our bubble, if you will, and uh, we don't really pay attention to these small towns anymore. And I think that's the big part, whether it be the highway move, you know, people away from that area or whatever the case may be. I just find it interesting. It's just an interesting question for a kid to ask. For a kid that's exposed like Ben too, that sees so much of the world, you know, it's just, a, it's just an interesting perspective. So that's what we're gonna do. I, I'm excited. I'm gonna, like I say, I have no plan. I have a couple areas. There's a couple things I wouldn't mind seeing if I do get the chance to go through there. Um, we're just gonna have to see. I love this old building right here, Antiques and Vintage, and they have even a better sign. I don't believe they are currently open, but it's the Madison Antiques Market and Interiors. Well, actually, they are open, and it's pretty cool. I, I don't know that I'm going to go in there right now, because I do have a lot of other things that I want to get done today, and, I'll, and try to cover some ground. It's a cool building over there, the W.T. Davis Building. It's like a houses of Madison, the treasures of Madison County Museum. It's pretty slick. I think we're gonna hop in the car and uh, head west for a minute. See what uh, see what we run into. Good morning. I hope you are doing well today. I am so happy to see you, and I'm glad that you're here. Uh, you already know by now that uh, Kyle's out adventuring, doing his thing today. Um, he's doing well. I know that everybody's been asking for an update with his depression. So let's go on a little walk and I'll tell you about it. We're just, we're walking around the campground. This is the back end of it. Got lots of, lots of room over here. It's really pretty. Great piece of property. Um, but yeah, Kyle's, Kyle's doing pretty good. He, well, for the most part, I think he's, he's pulling himself out of things. He had a therapy appointment yesterday doing doing as well as he can be and we're just we're super thankful for you watching and being here with us and you are the best family that we could have ever asked for well our next stop on our adventure days brings us here to greenville florida just a short 
13, 14 mile drive from where we just were. I want to show you here on the map, kind of so you can reference a little more. A little bit northeast of Tallahassee, um, just, just below the Georgia line here. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot to this little town, but we're gonna ride through and see what they got. There's the Greenville Fertilizer Company right there. Well, our next stop brings us to a little park here. If you wanna read this plaque here, just in Greenville, uh, Greenville, Florida, it's Ray Charles's hometown. He was actually born in Albany, Georgia, a couple hours north of here, but it was said that he spent most of his childhood in this area right here. Pretty cool. I really, I really enjoyed the movie Ray. I don't know if you definitely want to, Jamie Foxx's performance of a lifetime. Really, really excellent film, but yeah, he was a, he was an interesting guy. He was very, very talented, very, uh, very, uh, very big in the movement back then, like coming from small town Florida as a black man back, back in those days and having success he did is, it's pretty cool, but yeah, this is in the little park here, just off uh, just off the main drag here in Greenville. Got a dock there that doesn't seem to be too uh, people worthy these days. They got it closed off there is probably a good idea. And for me, nothing symbolizes a small town America more so than a giant water tower there. Yeah, let me know down in the comments, guys. Have you ever seen the movie Ray? Um, it's a fantastic film, I, or at least I thought it was. I really enjoyed it. Probably one of my favorite music movies. Um, yeah, Jay, like I said, Jamie Foxx put on the performance of a lifetime. Uh, interesting guy, really, really interesting film. How he kind of, you know, he did all his blind. Like that, that's that's something. That's that's that just has to be terrifying to me. But interesting film for sure. We're gonna hop in. Not a whole lot. This little town. It's kind of a one main road. The main road running through it. A couple gas stations here and there, but not a whole lot going on. Just kind of quiet. So as I'm rolling through uh, Greenville here on 90 West, FL 90 West, kind of runs parallel with um, I-10, kind of goes a little more to the north. We got next town, looks like we're going to be coming to is Monticello. I believe I've actually been through Monticello one time before, but um, I was just thinking how many, I wonder how many towns in America, how many small town Americas are there Greenvilles? How many small town American Greenvilles are there? There, there has to be a literal ton. I, 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 I would, I would be interested to know that fact. I know there's a couple larger Greenvilles. I know Greenville, South Carolina is a relatively large area, and Greenville, North Carolina is also a relatively large area. I've been to both of those, but um, I, I would venture to say it's one of those town names or one of those villes that there's, there's probably, a, probably one in every state, if not darn near every state. Well, our, our next stop did bring us here to Monticello in Jefferson County. Welcome to Historic Monticello, a Main Street community. All right, that's, I, I can get into that. Um, they have two signs, there's one behind me. The first one I pulled up to was significantly older. This one looks to be a relatively new erected sign. Uh, looks, it looks it's pretty nice. Well, I didn't make it far into Monticello and I, uh, as soon as you were pulling in through like the downtown area, they have this beautiful courthouse here. So I, I kind of stopped me in my tracks and it's like a courthouse square. It's like a it's like a roundabout going around. The, it doesn't really remind me of a square, but I guess technical terms it would be a square. It looks more like a, uh, a uh, roundabout circle to me. But another beautiful courthouse. They got the big light clock tower up there. Some sort of statue over there. I'm gonna maybe I can roll over there in just a second. I'm gonna assume that's a Confederate statue, but don't hold me to that. I'm just gonna do a little quick stroll around the square here. Kind of a bustling little town area though. Like there, there is steady traffic pretty much everywhere. And I, it's one of those areas I did, I wasn't able to kind of just lollygag around. Like I had to kind of get off the road and get out of the people's way. So definitely, a, we, we are relatively close to Tallahassee though. So I, I know that the closer you get to a big city, the, the towns start to grow in size and whatnot. But um, yeah, that, that courthouse is beautiful. I, I, I it's something about the South, they really do put up some, uh, Put, put, put some resources into their courthouses. Beautiful palm trees here, signifying that you are still in Florida, no doubt about it. There's the A.D. Perkins block, 1890, that building right there, that brick. Excuse me, guys, I'm coughing my head off. I love the, uh, the storefronts there, the facades. They're very, very, uh, very much so part of the times there. That's pretty cool. They call it the Perkins Opera House part of the Florida Heritage Building. So yeah, it's the Perkins Opera House here. It says they were, uh, they held uh, music performances in different various 
performances here until 1928. So a good, uh, what was that, a good 30, 33 year run there. Beautiful building, look at these old doors. God, they're gorgeous. Camera's being a little, camera's being a little funky, but yeah, those are beautiful. Now it looks like they've turned it into some like office buildings or some type of business suites. Definitely a beautiful building, well restored. I don't know if it's restored, but very well uh, maintained. But yeah, as you can see, it, it is a bustling little downtown area. There is cars everywhere going in and out of the the roundabout as fast as they can merge onto the uh, merge onto the main street right here. Definitely a little more active than our last town of Greenville. So as I'm making my way around the the square here, or the circle as I like to call it, you got the social here. Some, some type of restaurant or eatery. We got a, well, I smell the coffee, a nice looking coffee shop over here, the Cow House, Cow House Coffee Company. I already had my coffee this morning. I'm not, I don't think I'm quite ready for another cup yet, but it does smell good. So yeah, it's the erected in 1899 by the Ladies Memorial Association of Jefferson County, our fallen heroes. Doesn't really, they got a whole, let this be testament to the women's deathless fidelity to man's imperishable valor. And I'm kind of walking around here. I did see a thrift store and a treasure shop. I don't have, I'm kind of wanting to move really quickly. That way I can kind of cover as many little towns as possible, but I was parked right here. The Wag the Dog Thrift and Treasure Shop benefits the, the Jefferson County Humane Society. Let's go check it out. Well, this place is packed. They got some stuff in here. Jen's not gonna be happy when she sees this edit. <laughs> she mentioned something about a thrift shop. I was like, no, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna be visiting a thrift store today, but you never know. <coughs> I don't plan on buying anything, but curiosity gets the best of me sometimes. Here are these old wood floors here. You can them walk and you can hear them creaking along. But a really nice thrift store though. Lots, I mean, they've got tons of stuff in here. Kind of laid out almost like a Goodwill, like how they have it sectioned off with, you know, your housewares and they have uh, the clothing in one area. Pretty cool. I just haven't really been in the thrifting mood lately. I haven't done much of it since we left. I haven't done any of it since we left TTO, Central Florida area. Just haven't really been, just haven't really felt up to it for some reason. We're kind of changing things up a little in how we're traveling. So once a month, me or Kyle, depending on the person, um, one month it'll be me, the next month it'll be Kyle, we're gonna take solo trips by ourselves. So um, of course, you are coming with us, so it's not so solo, but we're gonna be going independently. I'll of course have Theodore with me because you know I'm not gonna travel without him. And we have one coming up in a couple days. So you and I are hitting the road and flying solo for a bit. Um, probably for about three days, we got some stuff to do and I'm excited to take you with me. But I'm gonna finish this lovely walk. Go, uh, go check in with Kyle for me, tell him that I love him and I miss him and I can't wait to see him when he gets home. Kind of cool. I, I rarely ever get to uh, stop at state si state line signs. You know, we typically when we're traveling, we're on the freeway and pulling over or doing 70 in a bus on a freeway is probably not the best idea. So I'm kind of excited. I got to stop for a state sign. Welcome to Georgia. Famous Ray Charles song right there underneath the thing there. I believe that's actually Georgia's slogan or tagline. Georgia on my mind. One of probably Ray Charles is by far his biggest hit. But yeah, Thomasville, we're still about another 15 miles away. This is headed, pointed back toward Monticello, toward the south. Across, you can see across the street there, the uh, heading south in the, uh, heading south in the opposing direction is the Florida state line, heading into Jefferson County. I believe this is actually uh, just past the sign coming into the state. It's Thomas County that we're currently in here in Georgia. As I was blowing by on what they're calling the Florida Georgia Parkway, I saw this old church right here, right off the side of the road. It, 
It's beautiful. Like, this thing looks old. It's even got the old tin roof on it with uh, some rust. It's got some very simple, I've never really seen, is that stained glass? I wonder if that's stained glass. I don't know, it's interesting. It's, it's definitely an old building. I'm not even sure if it's still an active congregation or not. The right bar of the cross there is broken off, but definitely it's beautiful though. I, I love something about old churches, especially in the South. There's probably, there's probably a million of these churches just spread all over the place here in the South. They got an old, under this old uh, cypress tree here, they got a pump shed over here with the, it's the Bethel MB Church. Worship service, second and fourth Sunday at 11 a.m. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, they do have a power pole over there, uh, but I don't know, it looks it looks pretty abandoned to me. The church sign up here in the front by the highway is knocked out or doesn't exist anymore. So it's, I'm kind of wanting to believe that it's probably not used anymore. But the, the grounds are well pretty well manicured though. As you can see, the bushes and the hedges and Somebody definitely keeps the place up a little bit, or at least the exterior of it. Always wonder the story behind these types of places. We got a, another block building here, which is a significantly newer building, kind of more toward the highway here. I don't know if you see that door there. I always, those doors are always curious to me. I wonder if they just built that. I don't know if you can see it or not. If they built that plan and to put some type of stairwell there or staircase, or who knows, maybe at one time there was one. But yeah, there's not even a door knob on that. I often wonder about those sort of things. I'm not really sure what the, the thinking was on that. But yeah, I just kind of caught my eye. And that's kind of what I'm doing today. Things that catch my eye, I'm gonna pull off and give my uh, give my view on it, I guess. I guess view or perspective or at least show it to you through my eyes. Well, we have made our way to the Big Oak here in Thomasville, Georgia. 338 years old, 155 foot spread, 70 foot tall. 27 feet in circumference that is that is massive i'll show you guys here in a second kind of the the massiveness of this tree it's a, definitely a live oak i'm pretty proud of this tree they've like dedicated some plaques some memorial the thomasville big oak placed on the land on the landmark and historic register by the georgia georgia urban forest council in 2017. but my god guys look at this thing like you know, I know we've been talking about some trees lately, but man, that thing is big. So yeah, I mean, look at this. I'm a big guy. I mean, you guys know me. I'm a, I'm a pretty big guy. And I'm, I'm, this thing, I'm pale in comparison to this thing. My God, what a tree. So they, they, they did say they have had some issues over the years. I mean, look how mad, I mean, those, like the limbs on these things are size of a typical oak tree. So they have had to help it along over the years. Um, they've got some, uh, some like a stand, like a big steel stand under this massive branch here. And then they've got quite a few cables running off of the main portion of the tree, the main anchor of the tree, which is, you know, trying to keep it alive. I get it, you know, and, and they're still, it's right in the middle of a city. So they're trying to keep it, preserve it and uh, keep it great for many years to come. But my, I don't know that I've ever seen an oak tree that big. Like it is just utterly massive looks like several trees in one to be honest with you as you can see there have been some large branches that have had to come off over the years but that's just impressive 338 years old like that's like that's over three centuries they're talking 1700s here people pretty cool i would uh, i bet it didn't look like this 338 years ago but we're on the, it's on the corner of Monroe and Crawford Street. I don't know if it's like a, it doesn't appear to be private property. Um, I didn't see where it was private property. So I'm, I'm assuming it's part of the municipality or the town here of Thomasville. But yeah, when I saw that on the map, I knew I had to stop. Uh, I like this sort of stuff. Yeah, they have, a, they, have another, they have another sign here, the Elizabeth Ireland Poe Park to signify the big oak, but there's a kind of a step back version of it. It doesn't, it's, it's just very sprawling. You know, it's kind of like the canopy is, a lot of the large limbs have fallen or kind of just sloped down. So it's, it's definitely a massive tree. I mean, I, I, you saw the, the, the stats on it. Definitely not your uh, every, every, everyday run in the mill oak tree for sure. All right, so guys, I'm starving after seeing that magnificent tree. Um, we're in Thomasville. 
come to find out, Thomasville is not really a small town. I, I don't know. I'm going to look up and let you guys know in the next segment. It's a pretty big place. I, I would, I, I definitely not on my small town radar. Very charming. Looks like there's a lot of money here. The way in there was beautiful, sprawling uh, estates everywhere. But yeah, we're going to order some lunch, and uh, I'm going to eat it in the car, and we're going to review it in the car. So I'm picking a place called George and Louis off of Yelp. Um, seafood, American Greek. They're apparently known for their Greek salad. Um, and I think I'm going to grab that and uh, one more thing. So let's give them a call and see if we can order some takeout. Okay. I have come to figure out a lot of these places, sometimes they're worth the wait. Been on hold for a minute and a half. Let's stick it through. I think it may be worth it. Thank you for holding. What can I get for you? Yeah, I'd like to place an order to go. I'd like a grouper yes, sandwich. Grouper sandwich. Fried no, uh, let's do fried. Lettuce, tomato, onion starter? Uh, no tomatoes, please. All right, you want to side with it? Uh, can I do fries and then a baby Greek salad or whatever the smallest Greek salad you have is? I got you. What else? And then uh, a Coke or like yeah, a fountain drink, please. All right. What's the name on the order? Kyle. All right, Kyle. I have a fried grouper sandwich, uh, no tomato, fries, baby Greek salad, and a Coke. It's twenty eight eighty five. Okay. Uh, you can order fries and baby Greek salad and Coke. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye bye. Ooh, that's pricey. Hopefully it's good. Twenty eight bucks. I don't know. It, it probably is a lot of food. I probably definitely didn't have to order the Greek salad, but that's what the place is known for, so why not? But she said 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to head there now and just kind of chill there. I'm only half a mile from there. Yeah, we'll get this food and try it out. Let you know what we think. I'll let you know what I think. There's no one, no one here but me. All right, first off, we got their Greek salad here. This is a small, famous Greek salad. This is $9.99. I am um, a little concerned with that. It's not a very big salad. I don't see any dressing on it. Hopefully it's integrated and mixed in with the salad. I am taking the tomatoes off. We'll eat the peppercini. So yeah, it does appear that the dressing is mixed in with the salad. Let's give it a shot. Well, I say that, but I honestly don't really taste any dressing. There's like a little hint of um, an oil-based dressing. I, other than that, I really don't taste much dressing at all. I mean, I'm picking up a little bit of a hint of a dressing, but overall, there's just not much to it. Definitely not, well, maybe world famous. I don't know, kind of meh. All right, next on the list, we oh, got a fry hanging on there. Next on the list, we do have the Greek, I'm sorry, the grouper sandwich. I've had a lot of grouper sandwiches in my life. It's on like a, um, I don't know what kind of roll would you would call this, it, but it's like an elongated roll. It's got tartar sauce. I asked for no tomato. They did put tomato on it. I did take it off. Pretty good looking piece of fish though. Pretty, I mean, say it's probably, you know, four or five ounce slice of fish. So let's go for it. Sandwich is good. Mm, I like it. Last but not least, just some good old crinkle fries. Um, they appear to be kind of cold, so I'm not super stoked about that. She told me 15 and 20 minutes. I went in there about right at 15 minutes after, so shouldn't have had to wait long or shouldn't not have had to sit for very long. They're fine. They're just kind of cold. They're not really, not really hot. It tastes okay, though. All right, so now time for my review of George and Louis, home of the world famous Greek salad. Kind of got bust through it pretty quick. A food, I give it a three. Salad was virtually non-existent. It was some shredded lettuce, a few pieces of crumbled uh, feta cheese, one olive and a quarter to slice of tomato. Really the dressing was pretty much non-existent, so definitely don't get that for $9.99. Absolutely not. Decor, I didn't eat in there, but I did take a little video walking in there. It's very open air, very light. I did like the decor quite a bit. 
Um, very crowded. It's 12:30 on a Friday. I gave that a three. Service. I did do walk-up service. It is a counter. It is a walk-up counter-style restaurant. So you order your food and they do bring it to the table. So for me, I ordered it and they brought it to me and just carried it to the car. Uh, the young man at the register was very attentive, very helpful, super quick. I gave him a four. Very, wor very hard worker. Very attentive. Very friendly. Value for the buck is a dollar. Twenty-eight dollars and some change. Grouper sandwich was excellent. We'll say the grouper sandwich was pretty solid. Fries were cold, crinkle cut fries. They could at least be fresh and warm. The salad was just terrible. Absolutely rip off there. Don't recommend. I give it its overall score 11 out of a 20. Not doing too good. I probably wouldn't return. There's a lot of options in this town. This one kind of got me. It was on my radar a little bit and uh, kind of letting down a little bit though. The salad was the biggest letdown. I love a good Greek salad and that was pretty ridiculous. Definitely not world famous by any means, but yeah, that's what I got. 11 out of 20. Let me know guys, Let me know down in the comments section, guys, what you think. What would, you, would you like to try this place still or would you pass on it? Pretty pricey though. I will say that. 600 feet, turn right onto South Madison Street. I just looked up the data on Thomasville here. The last census is just around 20,000 residents. Here's Broad Street. Looks like the main drag through the downtown area. Definitely not a small town by any stretch of the means. I don't even know what we consider a small town in the United States, but definitely not one I would classify as a small town. But it's rather charming, though. It's a very uh, well-kept, smaller-ish. We'll go with smaller-ish town. Uh, they definitely have the stereotypical water tower there to the left, a big silver water tower with Thomasville painted on the side. But yeah, overall, it's a pretty nice looking place. Just above the Florida state line. Well, I did want to make I did want to make one more stop here in Thomasville before we head out. This is the Lapham Patterson Victorian home. This is a historic home. I believe it's actually operate ran and operated by the Georgia State Parks Department. Beautiful azalea bush here. Man, these things are gorgeous. Wow. My grandmother had these growing up. It's cool to see one fully bloom like this. Spring is definitely in the air, guys. That is for sure. So the house was built between 1884 and 1885. It's the guy that built it, his name was C.W. Lapham of Chicago. This was his winter retreat. Apparently he was in the shoe business in Chicago and the great fire of Chicago back in the 1800s scared him, scared him quite, apparently scared him quite a bit and he came down here and built this massive Victorian style home. Absolutely beautiful. I just love the, I love the windows and how tall they are, how tall and skinny they are. I don't know if that's, I guess that's definitely Victorian era type uh, window, window settlements, but pretty cool little spot. I guess you can go inside and they have tours and stuff. It's on the corner of Dawson Street and is that Webster? Can't, can't tell at this point. Dawson and Webster Street, just outside of downtown, uh, downtown Thomasville. On my way out of town, I saw uh, Crazy Kitty's year-round fireworks locally owned. I love the cat there with the uh, rainbow wig pulling, uh, pulling that magnificent firework there. I will say though, it does not look like Kitty's is currently open though. I, I don't know that they're sticking uh, to their uh, to their sign there. I'm not, I'm not too sure about that. But yeah, here we go. If you need fireworks, please call this number right here. They'll be there in 10 minutes. So they're uh, yeah, definitely still in business there. You can see some fireworks poking through the window there. I'm not too sure what's going on, but I, I feel like you got to have a really big love for fireworks to invest in a permanent structure fireworks store. You know, you, I see a lot of these around the country and you never really see anyone there. So I'm assuming 4th of July holiday and New Year's holiday, they must really clean house because I don't know how they would keep the doors open otherwise. But uh, Crazy Kitties here is not currently open here in, uh, in mid-March. I, uh, I guess this is their, definitely their off season. But anyways, I was heading out of town and saw a crazy kitty and, uh, you know, I, I go crazy for a crazy kitty. Well, the next town we're rolling through in today's adventure is Metcalf, Florida. The E has kind of been, uh, looks like time has taken its toll on the E, but it is Metcalf, I'm sorry, Metcalf, Georgia. I can't believe I just said Florida. We still have, we, we've got to be pretty close to the Florida Georgia line. I have not seen it yet. Metcalf, unincorporated Metcalf Historic District. This is our next, uh, next small town America. I don't know, let me go down, can you guys see those wildflowers below it? Man, they're absolutely beautiful. I, 
they're really starting to pop now. Even since I went out a few days ago, they're starting to come out a lot more. Met another sign, Met Half Historic Community, 1889. What caught my attention was orange crush mural or painting on the side of this probably 1889 building right here, just, to, just as you cross through the town limits. Orange crush. I wonder if they're referring to like a beverage or is that just a, uh, I don't know. I'm curious about that a little bit. I'm not too sure. Mural up here. Yeah, Metcalf, Georgia mural. Somebody has put on the side of their business here. I can't exactly tell what type of business this is. But uh, yeah, it's like a kind of a swampy scene there. I, this area, I have noticed that driving through. Yeah, it's definitely, the, the topography is definitely rather swampy. I guess I didn't really expect that in South Georgia. I have really never seen too much of that. But according to this mural, as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, established 1888, the township sign is claiming 1889. So uh, maybe there's a little bit of a, a dispute on the actual founding date there. And no sooner that we entered Metcalf, we're exiting Metcalf, <laughs> not even a stop sign, or yeah, not even a traffic light or a, a metal stop sign. That's all Metcalf had to offer. And I'm okay with it. I like the mural uh, and the crush, orange crush. Well, I tell you, the state signs definitely differ ver depending upon what road you're entering in. This is a Florida state fine here on the route. We're on Leon County. Welcome to Leon County. Florida starts here. All right, well, our next town we come to is Miccosukee, established 1831. Properties listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Definitely a native name there, Micka. Mikasuki, I'm not exactly sure what that means. If you are aware, drop it down in the comment section below. I'd be interested to find out. I don't believe there is much to the town of Mikasuki. I do see a crossing or a, uh, a stop sign or a stop light. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the offerings are here in Mikasuki. It's some kind of old wagon coming up here on the right, decorated in Easter. Uh, Easter stuff because the Van Brunt Morris house 1911 getting ready for the Easter holiday which is fast approaching I I do imagine they do all they do have a gas station though I will say a convenience store if you will with a couple of gas pumps this is the first uh, services I've seen uh, since we left Thomasville as in Metcalf Georgia Miccosukee Florida is also going to have a Relatively short drive through oh, another massive oak tree right there. I don't know if I've just been seeing a lot of oak trees or just they've just been paying more attention to them. The village of Mikasuki. Let me wheel back around there real quick. All right, so I'm going to zoom in on the sign there. If you're interested in reading it, please feel free to pause it, if you will. I guess this is one of the National Historic Registry signs. But apparently a rail line operated through here to the mid-1940s, and uh, since that closed up, I guess... Uh, there hasn't really been a lot of operation here. So, I mean, I think that's definitely one of the contributing factors to these, you know, why small town America becomes small town America versus, you know, large metropolitan areas, urban areas is, you know, things like the railroad, you know, it's the highways, railroads, industry, I know plays a huge role in that. But a lot of these towns just kind of, you know, this town was basically left behind in the 1940s. Nonetheless, it is it is rather beautiful through here though. Lots of really large, massive trees with canopies covering the, the two lane road headed toward south, toward I-10. It's been a, you know, if nothing else, it's been a beautiful drive today. So we just, we just came under I-10 here and they got this, they call this Johnny Donut Seed. Uh, on my app, it was actually saying this was no longer here, but it appears to still be here. And uh, I'm not really sure how it got the name Donut Seed. I was reading it said, I guess it was, at one time it was a statue to a, to a Johnny Appleseed restaurant. And uh, this travel plaza here right off of I-10 uh, has claimed it to go up in front of their store. He's definitely missing his left, from his elbow down, he's missing his left arm and his hand. I don't know why they call it, maybe they're calling that a donut? I'm not 100% sure, but I mean, at one time, I believe it was definitely an apple. I don't know, I'd say he stands, I don't know, 12, 15 feet tall. He's, he's a pretty big guy. Well, I, I came to Lloyd, Florida here, just, you know, a few miles from the Johnny Donut Seed. 
to check out this place here, but it is clearly marked, no trespassing, do not enter. Um, supposedly it was some type of retreat built back, I don't know, in the early 20th century by some guy who rubbed elbows with Einstein and those types of guys, some type of scholar. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what he did, but he built this un very unusual retreat here in uh, just off of I-10 in North Florida. It looks pretty cool on the map, but, um, and there was photos from the inside, but it is pretty clearly marked, do not enter. And I, I believe I'm gonna obey their request on that one. So I was heading back from that last location. You got the United States Post Office here in Lloyd, Florida. It's a very unique building. I believe it's an old train station. I, I was got to look in, it's got some, uh, well, I love these uh, these lights right here. Look at that thing, look at Those things are pretty cool. But it's got these really old doors here what I'm assuming they would haul freight in through and uh, for the train depot here. Yeah, Lloyd, Lloyd, Florida. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff I like to see right here. Definitely an old, uh, old post office or old train station, whichever one you want to call it. It was definitely, it looks like this rail probably is still in use. Definitely no longer a train station though. Look at, wow, man, I'm getting eat up by this. Ow, shoot. My aunts, oh wow, this is pretty cool. Definitely uh, at one time served as a train station for this little, this little community. I really wish I could have seen, you know, the era and the time when they use these types of depots. I think it, it's just such an interesting form of transportation to me for someone who grew up in the, you know, the era that I did where this was basically on its way out. It was kind of almost non-existent even back then. It's kind of cool that they repurposed this old beautiful building into a post office. I like it. But truthfully, my main reason for pulling off here was I caught a glimpse of this boutique, my Gypsy Soul Boutique here. Got some flowers there on the wall with some old uh, bike rims there. I don't know, that, that sort of name for a boutique just kind of speaks to me a little bit. So I'm gonna walk in here and check it out real quick. Yeah, I stepped inside. They got a lot of local artists and stuff in here. They got these air plants over here they're advertising. Never really heard of an air plant. 1095 spritz twice a week. Yeah, I may pick one of these up for Jen. I think she'd get a kick out of that. I know she likes this sort of stuff. They've also got um, just a bunch of like local handmade artisans and crafts. Got some old saw blades here. Being normal is vastly overrated. Now that I can agree with. So it looks like they do have quite a bit of handmade soaps and stuff in here. They smell fantastic. Peppermint there. All these are cool. I'm always a sucker for a mushroom. I wonder what these do. Wow, some really good prices too. It's $2.50 for that. That's, that's a really good deal. Here's, I know Jen likes these. These, these uh, locally made fractal wood burnt incense holders. I like that. That is cool. Got some uh, mixed crystals over here. A lot of nice handcrafted goods. Oh, that's cool. Mr. Oogie Boogie there, my favorite character. Nightmare Before Christmas. Probably definitely my favorite Halloween movie of all time. I watch it, usually watch it several times a year during that season. A lot of mushroom stuff. I guess when you say the word gypsy, mushroom definitely comes to mind. That was, that was awesome. I, I love those kind of shops. Definitely check them out. The uh, My Gypsy Soul Boutique. I did, they do have a Facebook page. I looked them up on Facebook. Um, but yeah, they sell um, a lot of local craftsmen's goods in there. Now they had some really cool stuff and the prices were unbeatable. Honestly, for those types of stores, usually I expect to pay pretty big money, but uh, that, was, that was very reasonable. I got Jen something I'll show you here in just a second. I don't know why my camera's drifting on me. Yeah, good little stop there. Checking out the Lloyd Post Office, AKA the old train station or train depot. And got, got Jen a little, little surprise here. Actually, I'm gonna show you when I get home when I give it to her, so we'll do that. Anyways, I'm heading back. I think I've uh, done enough driving for one day. We're gonna start heading back for Madison. All right, we have made it home. Hey guys, you can see the puppers, just a Fifi, the Kevin, always excited to see me. Weezy just chilling up here on the couch. But yeah, let's go. I want to take Jen, show, take her back here and show you her thing. How you doing there, sport? Hi, baby. What you doing? Oh, shit. So, I was doing something on here. I got I'm you a little something. something. Oh, my gosh. This is the cutest thing I've ever seen. And the 
call it an air plant. Oh, I thank you, Fifi. You love the air plant. Oh, this is the sweetest. So I was driving through the middle of literal nowhere, and they had this place called the Gypsy Chic Boutique, and it was all like, and they was all like local artisans. So that was pretty cool. Oh my, can you pop me an air plant? Yeah. This is so sweet. Thank you, baby. I love you. Oh my God. I did, I did this whole speech and it was beautiful and I didn't even hit the record button. <laughs> right? Like who does that? <laughs> Mommy. It sounded great. Anyway, goodness gracious. I was saying that Kyle is out here with his friend hanging out in our lounge. I think Eli is cleaning out his bunk. And then I am inside because I don't know if Kyle told you or not. We are doing the Nomad Nightclub. And you're you're coming with us, so get your dancing shoes on. We are going to go hang out with all the adults. There's a DJ that's going to be here. And we are going to boogie the night away. Um, and boogie we shall. I've got some some options here. So I can't wait to get Kyle inside and then have him try these on because you might have some boogie fever. Boogie fever. Mm, mm. Boogie fever. <laughs> May I present to you this guy's outfit. Got his earth runners on, you know. Uh, and his nice, awesome new shirt I thrifted him. Holy cow, you're looking hot, man. Oh wow, that is very Elvis-like. I mean, I'm mixing Elvis with the 70s and disco era, I suppose. I, I'm not really sure, but I am me. So we are going to the Nomad Nightclub Adult Dance Party. Oh. <laughs> Oh, we got back. Jen loved her air plan. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed going out and making this style of video. Let me know down in the comment section, guys. Uh, do you enjoy this type of content? Seeing these like small town back road trips? And uh, let me know. Yes or no? Simple yes or no? Or I'd appreciate it. But uh, we'll see you guys here in a couple days. Another little video. And until uh, then, guys, take care of yourselves and each other. And I love you. Bye bye.